Hey everyone, my name is Olaf and today I'll show you how to make this exact animation in Blender. As always, it's going to be uh, quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's switch to the Cycles render and then click X to delete the default cube. Click Shift A and add a sphere. And uh, let's uh, go to the modifiers, add modifier and add a subdivision surface modifier. And increase the subdivisions to 3 and then add smooth shading. Okay, let's go to the uh, particle settings, click new, and then increase the number of hairs to about 2000. We need to change the type from emitter to hair, and then decrease the length of the hair. So let's uh, set it to 0.3, so that it becomes shorter. And uh, now we need to change the number of hairs by using children. So I'll click children, simple. And then in the render, increase it to about 500 or less if you have a, a slower computer. And um, let's go down to the cycles hair settings and um, decrease the size of the root so that the hair becomes thinner. So a 70% decrease in the thickness of the hair. And then the next step is to add the hair dynamics to the ball. So uh, click hair dynamics. And then let's open the settings. And first off, we need to change the stiffness. You can add another value if you want to, if you want it to be less stiff, but I'm going to set it at 0.3. I decided to set the randomness to 0.1 so that the animation looks a little bit more natural. And for the quality, I set it to 30. And now we need to animate the rotation and the location of the sphere. So move forward in time and click N to uh, make the transformation settings show up. Click I to keyframe the rotation, and then move forward in time. Let's uh, set it to uh, frame 60, and then click R, then set to rotate the sphere on the z-axis. Then to, to confirm the rotation, left click and I click I to keyframe the new value. And then let's move forward in time again, and now we're going to um, keyframe the location. Then move forward in time and click G, then set to grab the sphere on the z-axis. And then left click to confirm the location and then click I to keyframe. And now if you move back on the timeline, you will first see the change in location and then the change in rotation. So now it's time to bake the animation so that we get the hair dynamics as well. So click catch and then click bake to bake the animation. It's probably going to take some time, but uh, when you come back, you will see that you have the hair animation. And I think it looks great. So now it's time to go to the next step of the tutorial, which is to add lighting to the scene. So um, let's select the uh, lamp and then go into the lamp settings and change it from point to sun. Increase the size to one. Then we need to click use nodes and increase the strength to make the light stronger. Okay. And then we need to select the sphere. So right click to select the sphere then go into the materials, click new to add a new material. And uh, we change the color from white to blue. You can obviously change it to whatever color you want, but I like to make my uh, objects blue. Okay. And then let's go to the world settings and make this scene a little bit darker. Click shift set to go into render view. And as you can see in the rendered view, you can't see all of the hairs, but when you render out the final animation, you will see all of the uh, additional children here. Okay, so now it's time to set up the camera. So click numpad zero to see through the camera. And then click shift F to use the fly cam and then move around with W, A, S and D, just like in a video game. And then just make sure that uh, the sphere is within the frame of the camera throughout the whole animation. Just move in the timeline, and as you can see, it is within the frame. So let's just zoom a little bit further in, and it looks okay. So now the next step of the tutorial is to go into the render settings. So click the camera icon and then increase the resolution quality to 100%. And then if you have a fast computer, you might want to increase the samples as well. And then we also turn on the noising for less noise in the render. Okay, so let's make the first test render to see what it looks like. 
and I'm also going to speed up this part. When you make a test render like this, you also get an idea of how much time it's going to take to render out the whole animation. Okay, so now that the test render is finished, we need to find a place on your computer where you can save the finished animation. So uh, make a new folder and uh, make it wherever you want on the computer, it doesn't really matter. And then give it a name. And then select the folder. And then select the folder and I'm going to call this animation Toots. Okay. So uh, let's just go back to the 3D view to see what it looks like before we start the final render. And uh, just make sure ev everything looks okay. And I think it does. So uh, let's uh, change the end frame to 130 because we don't really need all of the frames afterwards. When it comes to the rendering device, you probably have to use the CPU because the GPU usually runs out of memory. So just uh, select the CPU instead, as I did. So uh, I use the CPU and then I click animation to render out the animation. And that's all for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and subscribe.